What's up, everyone? This is Matty Ice, the Iceman, live from South Bend, is the coach, this time on Iceman and Coach. How's it going, everybody? Happy Saturday. This is not usually a day that we record. Normally, we are every single Wednesday bringing you that fire sports content. But as we mentioned last week in the episode, the coach is in South Bend with his dad for the Clemson and Notre Dame game. So we are waiting here to talk to him live from what I believe is one of the bookstores with a whole bunch of memorabilia and collectibles. Clemson travels to South Bend. They're the number five team in the country. And Notre Dame was identified as one of the better teams in the country earlier this season. But apparently they've been unable, I guess, to capture that magic. And they're hoping to capture some of that magic today and vault into the top 25. They've actually had some signature wins and they've been able to right the ship a little bit under new coach Marcus Freeman. But this would be a signature win to vault them into the top 25. And I think that if they continue down this road, beating Clemson and also getting some more wins and running the table throughout the rest of the season, they're probably going to be able to get themselves into a New Year's Six Bowl game, perhaps, because as an independent, obviously with that fan base, they're going to be able to bring a lot of people to the games. And that means more money. And really, at the end of the day, that's what the NCAA wants. The NCAA wants the ability to bring more money, and that's what they're going to provide. So I'll be definitely interested to see how the atmosphere is, and I'll be interested to talk to Brad about it. I know he's there with his dad, and unfortunately, I've never really had this experience with my dad to be able to go to a game like this or be able to go to a football game in general. My dad really isn't into the live sports scene, and even though I am, I got to go to many Virginia Tech games, so I've been in an atmosphere like this, especially in the early 2000s when Virginia Tech was really, really good, and they were actually a part of the national spotlight today. They're a laughing stock and they're a joke, hopefully on the road to recovery because you'd like to have that and you don't want to see your program and your school go down in flames the way that they have but the landscape in college football is so much different anyway and a school like Virginia Tech is sort of middling in mediocrity and they've been in the middle of the pack for a while and honestly I don't know if they're ever going to get out of it but hey we will see right and hopefully we'll be able to talk to the coach and see what the atmosphere is like the people have to be excited I'm sure they've seen some rival fans I'm sure Clemson fans can travel people in the south feel very very passionately about college football and you know what God Godspeed to them to actually travel to this game and see Touchdown Jesus in person. I've always wanted to go to the campus to see what it is like. My brother-in-law has been, his kids loved it, they all loved it. And while I'm not a Catholic and while those things in terms of the religious aspects of it are not something that I gravitate toward, I can understand the history and significance behind the university, the buildings and all that stuff. So while we wait for Brad here, let's go into a little bit of business. I want you to support the Pub Time Podcast, which is where Brad does a lot of his other work. And I want you to support MattySMedia.com for all the other podcast that we have and there he is we bring in the coach right now from south bend indiana live our correspondent what's going on buddy hey not too much uh just cracked my first cold one for the day uh made a little trip over to the bookstore with my dad got the kids some souvenirs obviously as you can see there's some pretty good tailgating going on uh yes they were here bright and early this morning when we showed up I have been in that atmosphere, not in South Bend, but certainly in Blacksburg, the tailgating atmosphere. I was a college student, so it's a little bit different now, but uh, it looks a little bit more woodsy than I thought it was. I don't know anything about South Bend. What is South Bend actually like? Um, It's pretty much like any other uh, Midwestern town in the middle of nowhere, honestly. Um, We are actually parked on a golf course uh, currently, Uh, but I tell you what, this has to be the world's crappiest golf course with them allowing people to drive through it um, all fall. I mean, and they line it with Porta Johns everywhere. Uh, You know, we got guys with generators with the Blackstone and everything else getting after it. Uh, It's it's, it's really a nice, beautiful uh, fall morning. I can guarantee that golf course doesn't bring in quite the revenue that Notre Dame football brings in. So I'm pretty sure they'll trash that golf course all year long, as long as the Irish are, are winning games. Oh, no doubt about it. And I mean, I think it's 50 bucks a pop or whatever uh, for the golf course. And we were driving around earlier this morning before we parked just to look at some stuff because it wasn't busy. And there was a parking deck um, much closer to the stadium, 100 bucks to park there. I mean, so they're they're making money hand over fist. Those are Washington, D.C. prices, man. They know what they're doing. Well, yeah, when you get the Catholics involved, all bets are off. Oh, man, that's a whole other episode. I'm a (laughs) a recovering Catholic myself. So what's the atmosphere like there? Have you actually encountered a bunch of fans? Like when you tailgate, are you pretty much sequestered to your car? Do you kind of roam around with your dad? What's the what's the usual deal? Because I know you've been to South Bend before. 
No, I mean, what the crazy thing is, it's uh, the tailgating scene is kind of really disjointed because they have a lot of separate parking areas. So there's different uh, uh, tailgate setups here and there. The main one's obviously over by the stadium itself. A uh, huge parking lot just full of RVs and stuff. It's a pretty impressive scene. I'll try to shoot you a picture later. But yeah, everybody's really friendly. friendly. You just kind of hop spot to spot. And really, I've seen a lot of Clemson fans. That was going to be uh, my question. Morning. I, I have to yeah. assume that they travel well because college football in the South is religion, just like the Catholic religion is religion at Notre Dame so I think they're they're fighting for that but are the fans mostly jovial to each other or is there a lot of a lot of I think you understand what I mean like is there any bad blood no um that's one thing I think that is nice especially I think maybe in the north more so if you get down in the SEC country but really everyone's very friendly and maybe it's unique to Notre Dame I don't know but you pull into the parking lot the person takes your money the first thing out of their mouth welcome to Notre Dame you walk in the bookstore welcome to Notre Dame with a smile on their face um, and I mean, to whoever it is, you know, I, I encountered several conversations between employees and uh, Clemson fans that were talking like they were lost long friend or long lost friends. And so it really is a friendly, fun atmosphere. Absolutely. So it's basically the Chick-fil-A of uh, big time universities. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Pretty much. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great comparison. So what are what, what is the game experience like at the stadium? Because obviously touchdown Jesus in, in one of the end zones and it's an iconic stadium with an iconic fan base and just all the history behind it. The fight song. I almost actually played the fight song when you came on here, but uh, we are we don't have the royalties for that. So I'm not allowed to. But uh, everything is kind of iconic. And I guess even though Notre Dame is polarizing, you can't really argue with the history that they provide. Uh, no, you're absolutely right. It, it's so iconic and historic. Uh, there were, you know, I actually brought Ryan up here last year and he's not a college football fan, definitely not a Notre Dame fan. And he was even kind of lost in all the pomp and circumstance and tradition that exists here uh, between, you know, touchdown Jesus and the fight song. And they do a player walk where everybody lines up and the players walk in led by the band and stuff. And um, it's just a really neat thing to be a part of. And, you know, I, I think, everyone's correlation you know they've seen rudy you know and the gold helmets running out of the tunnel um they really is kind of a magical uh, experience no doubt about it so how do you live your college football experience live because obviously i i went to five years worth of tech games but you don't you get to go to games sporadically in south bend so what is your usual modus operandi for taking in a game? Uh, so typically, you know, I like to get set up. I enjoy, you know, beating the crowd. I hate being rushed or feeling rushed. So we got here nice and early, uh, settled in. We picked up a little breakfast on the way in. We were able to take in the bookstore before it got overly crowded. Uh, you'll kind of catch a trend here. I, I don't like dealing with large groups of people that I, I don't know very well, which is crazy for as uh, social as I am. But um, me and my dad were actually just having that conversation. But no, I like to get over there, not, not too early, but early enough to kind of see all the little uh, game day activities that go on, like the walk and seeing the band march in. They do the trumpets under the dome um, in the administration building under the Golden Dome. And then just the game itself, I, honestly, me and my dad, we go to a lot of games together, whether it's Notre Dame or Bradley basketball. We don't talk much. <laughs> um, we're just really taken in the game. And it's just kind of a passing remark of, oh, I think we should do this. Oh, I think we should do that. But we're, we're pretty honed in on, uh, on what's happening on the field normally. So does Notre Dame have anything they're famous for in terms of concessions? Like Virginia Tech, we had the turkey legs, which were amazing. They only sold them in one part of the stadium. Is there anything like that in South Bend? Not that I'm aware of. Um, I think the from what I've seen in the past, it's pretty traditional concession fare at the stadium. And I haven't heard any unique tailgating items. I'm sure there are people that have their little traditional things. Um, I know dad and I are planning on walking over closer to the stadium. There's a little Irish bar there. We're hoping to maybe hop in there before it gets too busy and just kind of set up shop for a couple hours and maybe grab some lunch. Uh, so, uh, I mean, maybe I'll have uh, some shepherd's pie or something, you know, and uh, get my Irish on. But other than that, I, I, I'm not aware of any. Is there a brewery or anything like that in South Bend? That's a great question. If there is, I mean, I think there's microbreweries all over the place anymore, but uh, as far as one that's really popular, I'm not sure. I just remember when I went to East Lansing, Michigan State had like a creamery, like a, a, a dairy creamery where they made ice cream because they had all those cows and the big agriculture things. So I didn't know if Notre Dame was famous for anything like that. If there's any type of beer that is mostly consumed while at these games. Oh, Guinness, maybe. Um, I don't know. A tech, did they serve at the stadium? I don't even know if they served when I was there. I'm pretty sure there was no alcohol allowed while we were there, but I think they serve it now. That's that's a big change that's happened, I think, across college football because they're like they're missing out on all this money. Yeah, I, I'm pretty positive they don't serve uh, here at Notre Dame Stadium, which I kind of find interesting uh, just because, again, the, the Catholic thing, they, they seem to be pretty on board with uh, alcohol. But um, 
Yeah, I was curious about that. So what are your feelings on the actual game? Because obviously you're excited, you're caught up in the moment right now, but the actual game is a different story. Clemson comes in at number five. They're very, very good, although kind of inconsistent from being good. They've definitely had some close games. Notre Dame, I think, is rising. They started off the season abysmally. Marcus Freeman has them catching on, and this is a signature win for them that if they went out after this, they may actually find themselves in a New Year's Six Bowl. So how do you feel about the game itself? Honestly, and, and this isn't really Homer talk, um, the game is much closer in reality than it looks like on paper uh, as far as the rankings go. Uh, and the reason that is, is they match up pretty well, like position group by position group, the matchups are not, there's not much of a disparity. I think that, you know, their quarterback has struggled a little bit. Uh, Drew Pine for Notre Dame has obviously struggled a little bit. So you kind of have that existing thing. There's really not a, a, a large outstanding disparity between position groups. The one I can think of maybe, you know, Shipley, the running back from Clemson's had a great year. Notre Dame's linebacking core has struggled some, so if they can't tackle him in space, it could be a long night. But a lot of the matchups bode fairly well, or at least are close enough that if Notre Dame executes, they can keep this thing competitive and maybe have a shot late. And I think that you know, this isn't the Clemson of five years ago. Um, this team has snuck by a lot of average to slightly above average teams you know they haven't just been out there blowing the doors off people like we were used to seeing in the past so and then i think you know just maybe a little uh home field advantage maybe a little irish magic and this thing could be interesting does Dabo get the Nick Saban pass where any atmosphere he's seen it all already because he's won national championships. We can't take that away from him. He's not my favorite guy, but clearly he's a good enough coach and recruiter that he's continued to have good team after good team. So do you think that when it comes to the team reacting to the home field advantage that Dabo is the kind of coach that can calm him down because he's been there? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, he's unflappable at this point because of the big games he's played in and the big atmospheres he's been in, like you said. And I think what's interesting about Notre Dame Stadium is the the atmosphere from a crowd noise perspective is not nearly as significant as you may see other places, at least not co as consistently. I think that if anything, the other team may get caught up in just being at Notre Dame, right? And the history and all that stuff that comes along with it, this, the distractions of all those things might play more of an impact than the actual crowd and their involvement. So you think that Notre Dame's going to win? I believe both of us picked them on crunch time this week, but have you had any any more thoughts? Have you reconsidered this pick? No, if anything, I'm doubling down, man. Irish, Irish all the way. So how's your dad doing with all this? Because you said you guys don't talk much, but uh, does he enjoy this kind of thing a lot? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we talk much you know, throughout the day. We'll talk, but like I said, once the game starts, we're pretty uh, focused on what's happening, as weird as that is. But no, he, he just loves taking it all in. Um, it was kind of fun for me. He'd never been in the bookstore before. And it's like being a kid in a candy store if you're a Notre Dame fan. I mean, they have everything. And it was kind of fun for me just to kind of wander around and just follow him and see him like checking everything out and excited about it. And, you know, he's just one of those people that he doesn't get much of a hurry, just likes taking stuff in and uh, enjoying the scenery. Well, I hope that you guys have a really, really good time. I want to let you get back to whatever it is your beverage of choice is today. Is it like a bush light or a natty light or something like that? <laughs> it is. It is a bush light. Um, enjoy a nice cold bush light. Absolutely, man. That's that's my flavor of choice most of the time. Now I'll deviate. I'll have a Guinness. I mean, I'll drink about anything, right? But my just staple go-to is the old reliable bush light. I wish I could share that opinion with you. When I used to drink, bush light was not my beer of choice. I was actually a Miller Lite guy for some reason because it did didn't taste like anything so i could drink 20 30 of them in a row and we are all good to go well i hope you have a good time man definitely take some pictures and i uh, can't wait to talk to you on tuesday to see how you felt about the game experience and i will say this it's gonna hurt me to say it but go irish sorry i almost did unmute yeah go irish uh appreciate that hope the ice time nation's able to tune in and catch the game tonight so they can uh enjoy our uh, breakdown next week and uh here's to an irish win that's right, folks. All right, we'll talk to you on Tuesday. This is, as usual, Iceman and Coach. The opinions and viewpoints expressed on the Iceman and Coach Sports Show are those of Matt Freights, Brad Powell, and their guests, and not necessarily those of the Matty Ice Media Network. The Iceman and Coach Sports Show is exclusively owned by Matt Freights and Brad Powell and is brought to you by the Matty Ice Media Network.